The smell of blood, feces, and urine filled the air. It was so strong that it woke me up. The last thing I remembered was running after I opened the last bathroom stall. I just remember tripping on my shoelace and hitting my head on the ground. I slowly touched my head and noticed blood trickling from the fresh gash. I must have blacked out after I fell. I scanned the room and saw my friend Rick laying in front of the last stall. His hands were covered in blood. Rick! I called out. I saw him twitch when he heard his name and wake up. He got up, then screamed while looking inside the cubicle and ran away. As soon as he saw his crimson stained hands, he cried in horror. What happened, Rick? I pleaded for a response. I carefully stood up while holding my head. I looked at Rick, who was now crying in a fetal position. I slowly worked my way to the last stall and vomited when I saw what got Rick in shambles. There was blood splattered everywhere. Tim was decapitated. His head was floating inside the toilet bowl. I looked at Rick and choked when I got a good whiff of the strong iron scent. I didn't do it, Rick kept repeating. I backed away from him. From the corner of my eye, I caught a glimpse of the inside of the next cubicle. Sean was sitting on the toilet. He wasn't breathing. His skin was all blue, and he had dark marks on his neck, like fingerprints. His body fell over. I don't remember anything else after that because I blacked out again. I woke up sprawled on the bathroom floor. Next to me was Rick, whose bloody hands were in handcuffs. He was crying hysterically. The paramedics were in the process of moving Sean's bluish corpse out of the room. Students and teachers were outside the door trying to peek inside. The police closed off the crime scene with tape. The smell of blood still filled the air. I looked inside the stall again and could see Tim's head still in the toilet. Rick and I were escorted into a police car past the students. Their eyes were full of anger as they watched. They thought we were murderers. Halloween should have been fun, but it turned out to be the thing that would ruin my life and kill others. My friends and I decided to create a horror pop-up for the Halloween event. We used our creativity to make it thrilling and fun. We had no desire to harm anyone. We were a group of four outcasts who came together thanks to our love of all things horror. Well, two now. Tim and Sean are dead, while Rick and I are the prime suspects behind their tragic deaths. After our medical checkup, Rick and I were brought to a small interrogation room. We sat in awkward silence for an hour. I heard distant chatter and noticed a security camera hanging on the ceiling. After a while, I finally decided to ask him something. Rick... What happened? He was avoiding my eyes, and his whole body was shaking. He finally calmed down and was about to say something. Then the door opened. It was the lead investigator of our case. He introduced himself as Officer Wren. He sat in one of the empty chairs. He examined our faces, then focused on Rick. You were about to tell Emmy something. Start at the beginning. He commanded. Rick expressed his desire to go home. Then tell me the truth so we can catch the culprit and set you free. The investigator said calmly. Rick was staring at the ceiling. I didn't kill Tim or Sean. I told them we had the worst idea for this Halloween pop-up. Your group converted the restroom into a horror booth and made it as realistic as possible, right? The investigator asked while taking notes. We were told to present something from Japanese culture or folklore. Rick pointed his finger at me. It was her stupid idea to summon the Akamanto. I wanted to do something more mainstream like the grudge. Was caught off guard. What is this Akamanto? The investigator interrupted. Her Halloween design was inspired by the Akamanto. It's a Japanese urban legend about a malicious spirit who appears to individuals using public or school restrooms. It is masked and dressed in a red cloak. Sean was wearing a red cloak, the investigator recalled. It was my idea to dress up and act out the legend. Anyone who entered the restroom was supposed to be asked if they preferred red or blue toilet paper after doing their business, I admitted. The police investigator narrowed his eyes. And in this legend, what happens if someone says blue? 
They will be strangled until they're suffocated and turn blue. Rick quickly answered. However, we decided to just spray blue paint on those who chose blue and red paint on those who chose red. The investigator tilted his head in confusion. So, Tim selected red toilet paper? We nodded simultaneously. Yes, and he was going to be sprayed in red paint so that it could look like blood, I said. Then Officer Wren sighed and lost his cool. Why was his head floating in the damn toilet then? Because he chose red. That means death by decapitation or a slit throat. Is this a joke to you? The investigator stood up. He was about to start lecturing us when his phone vibrated. Mm. And he received a message from his team about the legend of Akamanto. He sat down and read it silently. Then he murmured, What the heck is wrong with you two? A few days had passed and we didn't get much rest. The pop-up was supposed to be a redeeming moment for me to prove everyone wrong and regret ever belittling me, but it became too real. The spirit with a red cape actually appeared. We were back in the interrogation room. Rick started talking. Emmy tasked Sean and Tim to spray paint on anyone who used the bathroom. We removed the toilet paper from each stall, so when they had to wipe, they would be asked if they wanted red or blue toilet paper. While Emmy and I were both assigned to the entrance of the bathroom. He was right. I recall that two students came out of the restroom, smiling after having their hair sprayed with blue and red paint. Then minutes later, Sean came out and said Tim had a sudden stomach ache and was going number three. The smell was so strong that we had to temporarily close the bathroom. Sean had a stomach ache too after a few minutes. He tried to look for another bathroom, but it was too far away. He put on his mask to protect his nose and enter the bathroom. And that was the last time we saw him alive. We wondered why the two never came out. So I asked Rick to check on them. I heard Rick screaming, so I followed him to the restroom. I saw him trying to keep Tim's body intact. Then I saw a floating red cloak, so I tried to run away, but my head hit the stall and I passed out. Officer Wren slammed his fist on the table. I'm not here to listen to your bullshit. Two kids died and both of you are suspects. He pushed the table. Officer Wren escorted us to a cell and said he would ask us questions again later. I'm leaving you two for now. When I come back, both of you better tell me the truth. He started to walk away. He suddenly stopped and looked back at us. Get your story straight or else you can kiss the rest of your youth goodbye. As soon as he left, the camera on the ceiling pointed towards us. This isn't our fault. We can figure this out. My uncle's a lawyer, I said softly. What? Akamanto was your idea. You have to take the blame, Rick yelled. I walked to the other side of the cell. Me? Take all the blame? What a jerk. It was at that moment that we heard the sound of a toilet flushing. Our eyes widened when we realized that there was a toilet behind us. We both stared at it. I could see the cold sweat dripping from Rick's face. The light flickered for a moment. We heard another flush, then another, and another. Whoever was controlling the toilet was clearly doing it on purpose, and then it stopped. We started backing away from the toilet. Rick screamed for help. He was shaking the bars, but it didn't budge. We braced ourselves for anything that would come out of the toilet, but nothing happened. Could it be that there was just an earthquake and it triggered the flush and messed with the lighting? That's probably what Rick was thinking, because he had a smile on his face as he started walking towards the toilet. What? Are you thinking that the Akamanta would follow us here? He started peeing. I smiled sheepishly. Then suddenly, a voice spoke from inside the toilet. What color cloak? Red or blue? The voice asked. Cloak? You said it only asks about toilet paper color. We knew that if he responded red, the Akamanto would slit his throat. If he answered blue, then the entity would grab his neck and suffocate him till he turned blue. The spirit in a red cloak came out of the toilet. Just choose one. You have to or else- Shut up! Let me think. Rick interrupted me. Okay, I choose blue. The Akamanto wrapped his hands around Rick's neck and started choking him. I could hear Rick gasping for air and then dead silence. I knew I was next. 
After Rick's body collapsed to the ground, Akamanto turned to me. Now you, red or blue? I remained silent and just stared at it. After a few minutes, it disappeared. I forgot to mention, the only way to outsmart the Akamanto and have it leave you alone is to not respond.